Our first speaker this morning specializes in psychopharmacology and operates a truly international approach in terms of both information and products for his patients. Perhaps that is the reason that he is one of the most famous psychiatrists in the United States and why a friend of his suggested to me that he is to New York what Fraser is to Seattle. <laughs> I don't know if that is true, but it is certainly a pleasure to have him with us today. Would you please welcome Dr. Richard Brown. Thank you, uh, Phil, and actually thank very much the people at IAS as well as Vitamin Research Products, because in fact without IAS being there, I would not have been able to help thousands of people around the world with SAMI, which is what happened. I'm going to give you a whirlwind tour through SAMI, since as of two years ago there were over 3,000 research papers. I can only cover a little bit of the data in this uh, period of time. But, I, but I just uh, some people wonder, how did I get into using SAMI, since it was years before most people in the United States? And I had a resistant, uh, depressed patient come into my office, and that, as of 10 years ago, was a lot of what I was seeing, and still is. And she had failed everything then available, and also had a lot of side effects. And she was a very intelligent woman. Much of my practice are physicians, in fact, who have often failed standard things or can't tolerate them. And she had read about SAMI on the internet. And she said, will you treat me with SAMI? And I said, well, I know all about it. I know about the research. I've heard about it at meetings. But it's not here in the US. And she said, oh, I found out how to, be, how to get it on the internet. And in fact, she had located IAS. And uh, she was better in two weeks, having been ill for years and had no side effects. And I went on from there to treat a lot of patients and then began doing research with neurologists, a team of neurologists and biochemists, uh, some in New York City and some at other institutions around the US. And uh, then I decided that uh, it would be good to write a book about it so everyone could benefit from it. And now people around the world have heard more about it. So I'll try to explain to you uh, what SAMI is with a focus on how SAMI may apply to longevity. Just a brief history of SAMI. It was uh, discovered in 52 in Italy by Cantoni. It took 24 years to stabilize it for injection and study. And the first uh, significant depression study was reported in 76 um, and it was released in Italy uh, about 80 it came out in Spain in 1986 it was released in Germany and a number of mail order companies uh, had it I guess by about 96 97 in the US but it became released over the counter uh, in 1999 now between 1973 and the year 2000, there were more than 43 studies of it for depression, over 20 studies of over 20,000 patients for arthritis, six studies for fibromyalgia, uh, so many studies for liver disease, I, I, I don't even count them at this point. This is the structure of SAMI, and you can see this is the methyl group, which it is able to donate, and a sulfur group also and an aminopropyl group. So it is formed from a condensation of methionine and ATP. And in some regards, it acts like a B vitamin, in, but it does much more than that. And some chemists think it's the next most important molecule in your body to ATP. In fact, as of two years ago, we thought it uh, participated in just 100 crucial reactions in the body. A recent paper suggests there's actually many more reactions in which it participates that were not thought of, many with other B vitamin-like compounds, such as biotin and uh, panathenic acid that had hitherto been unrecognized. So there are three main kinds of reactions that it can participate in. There's methylation, so donating the methyl group, donating the sulfur group, which ultimately leads to the production of glutathione 
and acetylcysteine and taurine, all important antioxidants in the body, and also donates an aminopropyl group, which leads to the formation of spermine and spermidine. Now, I borrowed this slide from a colleague, a German colleague. I didn't uh, change the names back to English. They're pretty much the same chemically, especially if you add some E's uh, on the end. Uh, professor Billigman is a professor of sports medicine uh, at Perch in Germany, and he runs the Olympic sports medicine program. And I learned the most about using SAMI for arthritis and sports-related problems. And in fact, they just put their older Olympic athletes in their late 30s and early 40s on SAMI before they get arthritis instead of waiting for them to get arthritis. So here is SAM. And essentially, it is going to detoxify homocysteine, produce glutathione. It also helps incorporate phosphatidylcholine into the nerve cell membrane. And we'll come back to that. And furthermore, it goes down through several pathways to produce anti-inflammatory leukotrienes and prostaglandins. And then over here, it affects spermine and spermidine, which have analgesic and anti-inflammatory properties, as well as helping cell growth and differentiation. So this methylation is crucial for DNA, protein, phospholipids, and the formation of neurotransmitters especially the catecholamines and serotonin. And the formation of the sulfur is very important for the matrix of the cartilage, as well as generating glutathione, probably our most important endogenous an antioxidant. In terms of DNA methylation, it looks like it especially protects cytosine bases from chemical carcinogens. And methylation does help regulate which genes are turned on or turned off. Uh, there is some controversy about how much and what kind of methylation is important. But the predominance of the data at this point suggests that uh, methylation will protect cytosine bases from carcinogenic substances. And it's very important for just a few hormones, these major hormones. It's important, including Dr. Dean mentioned prolactin yesterday, but also some other extremely important hormones, such as growth hormone, et cetera. And uh, it's also important for the methylation of GTP binding proteins and the methylation of the muscarinic cholinergic receptor protein. And it's important for myelination um, with uh, Teddy Bottiglieri, Teodoro Bottiglieri. Uh, we've helped a number of children, in fact, who have a basic disorder where they cannot myelinate because they cannot make, make SAMI, and their brains do not develop. And we've gotten some of the companies that have SAMI in the US to donate uh, SAMI so these children's brains can then grow and develop. And this is uh, an important and often ignored aspect of SAMI. It, uh, does allow the incorporation of phosphatidylcholine, and that seems to allow a more fluid membrane structure, which means that the proteins that affect the ion channels can change conformation in a more fluid environment and therefore work better. So this affects beta adrenergic receptors. It also turns out to affect cholinergic receptors, GABA receptors, and, and probably indeed other receptors as well. So it affects ion flux and also cell fusion and membrane interactions. And here you can see it's important for the formation of uh, adrenaline um, and also melatonin. Uh, I won't go into the data showing that SEMI is also important for the proper relationship of the insulin receptor in the membrane with glucose. So what I'm saying is Sammy is touching upon all of the things we've heard about in the last couple of days, whether it's neuroprotection or uh, the function of the membrane or the function of the insulin receptor or the formation of certain important things like growth hormone, prolactin, and melatonin. So just another way to look at it. We think a major uh, 
basis of SAMI's antidepressant action is the transmethylation, although the incorporation of phosphatidylcholine may also be quite important. By donating the sulfur, it stimulates proteoglycan synthesis, which is relevant to arthritic conditions. And then it also has these anti-inflammatory and analgesic activities, and turns out to protect the GI tract lining at the same time. So again, by incorporating phospholipids, you have a more fluid, less rigid membrane, which is characteristic of younger animals. So that SAMI boosts beta-adrenergic receptor density in the cortex of rats and restores the level of those receptors in aged rats to that of young rats uh, and generally improves membrane fluidity. It improves cholinergic receptors and, as I mentioned, several other receptors. Now, with age, the levels of SAMI decrease, okay? These are the young rats. These are the old rats. The tissues for which SAMI is especially crucial, we think, are the liver, number one, and then the adrenal and the brain. Now, um, this is a, a very recent study, which I think speaks to some of the things uh, we've been talking about the last couple days. This is from a group, Pavia's group in Malaga. Uh, they've done a number of studies showing that SAMI improves cognitive function in older animals, and I'll show you some data on that. They went on to try to figure out why it helped cognitive function in older animals. And they did two separate sets of studies. In uh, one of these, they gave rats uh, for basically 22 months 10 milligrams per kilogram subcutaneously versus a lysine-injected control group of rats. And they found that SAMI decreased free radical production by 46% versus control and increased glutathione levels by 50% and levels of glutathione peroxidase and transferase. And those enzymes are, are really quite crucial in the antioxidant defense system in the body. They were boosted by close to 100%. And they did that both uh, in, in rats and then removed their brains. And they also had uh, cultured brain slices that they did the same study in and got the same results. Now, again. Uh, SAMI will detoxify homocysteine and lead to the formation of glutathione. That's probably how they got those results. Now, another issue is, uh, does homocysteine speed aging? And what's the relationship of SAMI to homocysteine? We know that homocysteine affects cardiovascular disease. Uh, it certainly increases your risk of heart attack and stroke. It also increases your risk of Alzheimer's. Uh, and probably a number of other illnesses, such as colon cancer, certain kinds of leukemia, depending on your genetic background. Uh, a recent, generally, uh, the result you will get back from the lab will say that uh, normal is less than nine, and over nine is serious. You know, around, uh, say, 11 or 12, you double your risk of heart attack. A number of the patients, elderly patients I see, have levels of 25 or 30. Uh, but in this recent study, uh, reported last year, levels above seven caused an accelerated loss in the length of telomeres every time the cell divided, okay? And SAMI works with these B vitamins, folic acid, B12, and B6, in fact, to reduce homocysteine. So there are three studies showing that SAMI does not increase homocysteine, and in fact, in the animal data, it looks like as long as there is some folate, B12, and B6, you will reduce homocysteine with SAMI. So you need both these vitamins to do that. Now, if someone was totally B6 folate and B12 deficient, then you might have the reaction starting to go a bit the other way. But that would hardly ever occur. Certainly, the patient would be extraordinarily ill. Another issue is, aside from SAMI decreasing oxidative stress, that it can reduce what we might call reductive stress, okay? So SAMI and other electrophilic methyl donors, such as carnitine, phosphatidylcholine, uh, beta ion, can protect against reductive stress and improve the NADH to NAD plus ratio. For example, these diseases 
have been associated with an abnormal ratio, such as alcohol intoxication, doxorubicin, which is used for cancer chemotherapy, cyclosporine, used for cancer chemotherapy and transplantation, uh, hypoxia, and again, you can read more about a theory about this in the British Journal of Nutrition this year. Now, a number of diseases have been associated with low levels of SEMI. Uh, because there are so many, I just picked out a few. Depression, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Parkinson's before treatment, there are low levels of SEMI. And it looks like from the colleagues I work with in New York, uh, actually it's a, it's a network scattered around the country, it looks like L-DOPA further depletes the brain and the body of SEMI dramatically. And we think that's why Cinemet stops working after five or more years. So we've taken patients who've stopped responding to huge doses of Cinemet and dopamine agonists who were said to be demented, who were due to be put in nursing homes, and reversed that condition uh, where they only needed a few hundred milligrams of Cinemet, they stopped being psychotic, they stopped being demented, and they went back to work. Okay, their families were astonished. And the neurologists who saw them were astonished, and, and of course, they usually didn't believe that natural things or, quote, alternative things could be of any help, and they'd keep going, I, I, I don't know why this patient's getting better, and I'd say, well, maybe we should stop the SAMI, and they go, no, no, don't stop the SAMI. Uh, there are other diseases such as HIV, probably uh, lack of SAMI and reduction of glutathione are involved in HIV illness in a number of ways, including the myelopathy and dementia. Uh, we'll be reporting some more stuff on that in the next year or so as soon as we can write it all up. There are other diseases, but again, uh, I brought some reprints and you, you can get some in the back. I don't know if I have enough for everybody. Uh, but uh, Phil said he, they were going to Xerox some more of those, and you'll be able to get them at lunch if you don't get a reprint in the back. A review article we recently did. Now this is from Pavia's group again, uh, reported at a meeting about two years ago. It's been uh, published since. Uh, they took young rats, and they treated them for six months with 50 milligrams per kilogram SAMI per day subcutaneously. And then they put them in a difficult spatial testing maze. And basically, you can see that the SAM-treated group made 90% of them, or 91% of them, made more than six correct choices. In, uh, in the placebo group, uh, about 46% of them made more than six correct choices. So obviously, SAMI is having an effect uh, on the younger rats. But it's even more dramatic when you give it to the older rats from birth. These are 22-month rats. They've been treated with just 10 milligrams per kilogram per day from birth. Okay? And again, I think that a lot of the things we're talking about, if they are going to be preventive of aging, or at least in terms of neuroprotection, you need to start early. Okay? Once the brain is very damaged, you can only somewhat alleviate that damage. And you can see that uh, in these rats, the SAM-treated group, 70% on SAM made more than six correct choices, whereas only 27% of the control group made more than six correct choices. So this is your brain on SAMI, or this is a rat's brain on SAMI, and this is the rat's brain on control. Which would you rather have? And of course, we're all worried about what happens as oxidation goes on in the brain. This is Superman in his later years, forgetting where he's going. Uh, now, some, some of my colleagues in the US criticize Sammy. They say, well, I've never heard of it. And besides, the data looks like it uh, doesn't get into the brain anyway. Actually, there's ample data that uh, Sammy gets into the brain. This was a study done 10 years ago in patients with Alzheimer's. It gets the, in the newer oral preparations that came out around 1990, 1992, uh, they get into the brain in quite high concentration. Uh, you'll still see review articles lately being published. A lot of the drug companies are very upset about SAMI. This is the one study uh, in humans. Uh, this was an Italian group, Fontanari's group. 
They took 40 patients with heterogeneous brain syndromes, probably a combination of Alzheimer's and multi-infarct uh, dementia. And they were treated uh, single-blindedly uh, for two months, and then they went on to get SAMI. 400 milligrams IV, which is like 800 milligrams orally for 20 days, and then 800 milligrams orally with 200 IM, so about the equivalent of 1,200 milligrams orally for 40 days. Okay, this may not be long enough, and my feeling is it would have been better if they'd started to get this in their early 40s, but at any rate, uh, there was significant improvement after three months on the SAMI with a very significant improvement in measures of energy, drive, decrease in confusion, improvement in self-care, and of course, mild depressive symptoms. Patients with serious depression were excluded from this study. But my feeling is for SAMI uh, to operate best in this arena, it should be like it's in the rats. You have to get it early around the time that significant deterioration would be starting. And again, this is theoretical. We, we need more human studies. Now, just to quickly scan through in the, in the small amount of time I've got, uh, the studies of SAMI for different clinical conditions, because I'm a clinical uh, psychiatrist, although I do clinical research. Uh, my colleagues in America say, well, uh, there are no studies of SAMI. Uh, these are just the open trials of SAMI. You can see starting in 73, going through 1995 with Maurizio Fava at Mass General. Uh, doing 200 patients alone, and all of these studies showed that SAMI was helpful. Uh, and in fact, several studies that were looking noted that patients were frequently better by day 7 to 10. But these are just open studies, so these are the controlled studies of SAMI versus placebo, starting in 73, going through 97. And you can see in the studies from 1990 on, most of these studies used the oral formulation and used 1,600 milligrams a day. These are seriously depressed patients, not like the studies done in most of the studies of St. John's Wort, which were done with quite mildly depressed patients. These are severely ill, for the most part hospitalized. And once again, uh, SAMI was better than placebo in every study except this one by Maurizio Fava, and in fact, in that study, he had an older formulation uh, of SAMI, which if you, if it says if you take it out of the blister pack, it will oxidize, because SAMI is such an avi avid antioxidant. Unfortunately, the FDA rules require in studies that pills be put in a bottle, given to the patient, returned by the patient, and counted, and then the FDA analyzes the pills to make sure they're really what they say they are. But the old form of SAMI, if you take it out of its blister pack, it oxidizes into a brownish goo of nothing uh, very quickly. And so that study could not see a difference uh, between SAMI and placebo. But every other study did. Unfortunately, that study then made the FDA stop the research in the United States. It was about that time, I not knowing this, uh, because none of the researchers uh, said anything publicly about it since they'd been very excited about SAMI. I found out from my patient about IAS and began to use SAMI and treated hundreds of patients and later wrote a book so that other people, not only in the U.S. but around the world, would benefit, which is what has happened. These are the studies of uh, SAMI versus other antidepressants, and in fact, more of those studies, the majority of them use tricyclics, particularly chlorimipramine, or in the United States, the brand name is anaphronil. And that is, pr if you look at the effect size of chloramipramine as an antidepressant and as an anti-obsessive compulsive disorder agent, it probably is the most powerful antidepressant. However, it also has the worst side effects, so we tend not to use it that much. And in these studies, SAMI was compared both against injectable chloramipramine, which is a rapid treatment used in a number of countries around the world. It works pretty fast and also against oral forms. And uh, once again, SAMI was completely equivalent to the tricyclics and the other non-tricyclic antidepressants. It, however, has not been compared directly to an SSRI, 
but to my mind, SRIs and tricyclics are equivalent. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a big difference. Now, maybe you should lay off the antidepressants. Can you have too much of a good thing? What are the side effects of SEMI? Well, SEMI is extremely low in side effects. If someone has a classic bipolar 1 disorder, SEMI can rapidly make a patient manic. And there are many case reports of that in the literature. So I do generally recommend against using SEMI in a bipolar 1. However, in other forms of bipolar, cautiously used in combination with mood stabilizing agents, it might be possible, but it has its risks. Because tricyclics, we know, rapidly induce mania. And SAMI's EEG effects on the brain look quite similar to tricyclics. And SAMI and tricyclics have a different spectrum of EEG effects compared to serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Um, SAMI, however, has few side effects. There is some nausea sometimes in the beginning, headaches, uh, jitteriness, which usually fades away. It is energizing. It is stimulating. It's not sedating. Within about five days, you can show on measures of neuropsychological testing that there is an enhancement of vigilance, attention, and memory, not only in normals, but in uh, alcoholics who are being detoxed uh, from alcohol. Uh, at about 1,200 milligrams a day, about 20% of patients will have loose bowels. Now, some patients like that. I have some older uh, patients who put all their girlfriends on it just for the constipation effect. So, so SEMI stimulates sulfate incorporation into the cartilage matrix, and that is undoubtedly why it helps arthritis. And it also has, through those other pathways, anti-inflammatory properties. So SEMI is produced naturally in the body but we probably don't make enough of it, especially once we reach our 40s. It is crucial for most important organic chemicals in the body. It is a precursor to glutathione. Uh, oral administration of the modern preparations, uh, if it's enteric-coated uh, and is stabilized against oxidation, it will increase levels in the plasma and spinal fluid. And probably its antidepressant effect is through methylation and phospholipid incorporation. And by the way, there's one human and one animal study uh, indicating that SAMI regenerates cartilage and more powerfully than glucosamine chondroitin. Not that that doesn't, but. So we know that free radicals oxidize nucleic acids and inhibit methylation turning on cancer genes and turning off normal genes and suppressor genes. Oxidation inhibits methylation, necessary for synthesis of proteins and lipids. And the basic problem in depression is the excess level of stress hormones, which tear up the brain and the arteries and the heart. And, uh, and also, that's part of what's going on in arthritis. It's under-recognized that there's a very high overlap of depression and arthritis. And semi-dependent methylation and antioxidant production may play a major role in decreasing oxidative damage. I, I'm thinking of a patient who saw me last week who's a physician who she's now in her uh, early 40s, and she used to run a lot long-distance runner. And she had to stop running five years ago because of pain in her knees. And she saw me, and I put her on Sammy. And now the last two years, she's running a lot again. And um, she wanted to put her mother on it. And so she went to her uh, uh, mother's physician, internist, with her and said, you know, I'd really like to put my mother on Sammy because she's having arthritis. And he said, well, I don't believe in any of that natural stuff. Uh, you know, I, 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 I really wouldn't want her to be on that. And then he stopped a second. He said, wait a minute. My mother's taking Sammy, and it helped her joints. Uh, so that's a typical kind of reaction in the U.S. Now, I guess the question I'd like to throw out at the end of this anti-aging conference is, is aging all bad? I, you know, not everybody is like the people here. I, you know, I walk outside, and some people are smoking and, you know, that kind of thing. Obviously, not everybody, uh, you know, wants to live as long as they can, as gracefully as they can. And, and just to say, well, some people may not want to take SAMI, 
and that's their choice, or any of the other things we're talking about uh, here today. Uh, do I have any time remaining, or is that it? Okay. Why don't I entertain questions? Because often when I lecture about Sammy, I have like two hours, and I can cover things more. So I'd rather give you a chance to uh, ask questions, too. Okay, we, I, I'll, say, I'll say what it is, but we go into that in the reprint. It depends on the condition you're treating and how severe it is. For example, for arthritis, a typical dose, if someone has an acutely inflamed joint, is 800 milligrams a day for two weeks, and then stepping down to 600 or 400 milligrams. SAMI absorbs best on an empty stomach. Food impairs its absorption. So I, I also think more of it gets, see, the, your liver loves SAMI, and it will take a lot of SAMI. It'll take 80% of the SAMI right away for its function. So that's less to get to the brain. And so, um, you know, basically, my feeling is you get a more, the recent data just recently presented and published is that if you give a big dose of it, first thing, you get a more powerful effect on the EEG. Uh, However, some patients also like the boost of energy that an afternoon dose gives them. But it should be on an empty stomach. Now, if, say, I've had patients who were about to go for a joint replacement, what I learned from uh, Herr Professor Billigman is to use 1,200 to 1,600 milligrams a day for three to six months. And then, actually, I've, I've taken a number of patients who were about to do, in, including relatives, who are about to go for surgery and they, uh, within six months, have been running and playing uh, golf and tennis again without a problem, without surgery. So, you know, this is arthritis. For depression, it depends on how severe the depression is. And I wrote a book, which there, we have some copies uh, in the exhibits. It's called Stop Depression Now. It was written for consumers, but also for doctors. There are, we have several hundred references in the back and we talk about the dosing, and there's a simple self-test for depression. So patients can score themselves and know from that what dose they should start on, whether it's 400 a day or 800, or with very severe patients, they may need 1,600 milligrams a day. And for severe patients, a lot of the patients I see, they may not respond to any single antidepressant, whether it's SAMI or Prozac or Desipramine. And, but there are four studies showing that SAMI will augment and hasten the antidepressant effect of standard antidepressants. I'm sorry to stop you there, Dr. Brand. Okay. Absolutely very interesting. Professor Vladimir Anisimov. First, uh, first of all, I would like to express my thanks to organizer, Professor Dean and uh, Phil Mikans for inviting me. And uh, for this conference and other organizer. And uh, my topic today is effect of pineal peptide preparation of lifespan and carcinogenesis. All experiment, all experiment we have performed with together with Professor Dillman from Institute of Bioregulation and Gerontology. Next. Oops. When we look on the lifespan prolongation, it's possible to say there are three different type of geroprotectors. In some cases, they shifted to right survival curves in parallel way. In some, day, some cases, it slowed down aging rate in Gompertz, by Gompertz parameter. In some cases, maximum lifespan is not increasing. At survival, mean survival, increase, increasing mean survival time depends on the survival in young age, not in old way. If we put correlation between the survival curves and tumor yield curves, you can see in this case parallel shift, we can found parallel shift in tumor incidence. Only latency increase that incidence practically same as in control. It's good. In this case, slow down aging rate and slow down the, uh, the tumor yield curves. Tumor less and latency increase. In last case, in some cases, we can find increasing tumor rate. It means the payment for increasing lifespan could be so big, the cost is tumor. It's not correct. In this case, we have deal with antioxidant mainly. In this case, antioxidant and some other 
cross-linking helating agent. In this case, only few agents work in these ways, caloric restriction, panel preparation, and anti-diabetic biguanids. On this picture, I summarize the effect of all well-known anti-aging drugs, geroprotectors, effect on the normal aging process Cell, stem cell could be differentiated and pass to aging. Some anti-aging mechanism opposite it. It leads to damaged cell and cell death. On the other hand, cell, stem cell could be de-differentiated. It, it produces latent tumor cells, it dormant cells, and then transformed cell and cancer. We have dealt with a lot of anti-aging drug today, antioxidant, melatonin, pineal peptides, anti-diabetic, big one is, some hormones, neurotropic dust, immunomodulator. Both, all of these drugs could mimic the main effect of caloric restriction, not all, but some of them. But in this, in both sides, we have effect on the, this and this process. If equilibrium would damage it, we can lead to preliminary aging, in some cases, to increase tumor incidence. Today, I will talk about the pineal preparation. It's well-known hormone melatonin. A lot of uh, uh, things was reported yesterday by Professor Perpauli. And uh, practically, starting for the early 70s, we are working with epitalamine. It's crude complex pineal peptide preparation. There are a lot of peptides in this preparation, but molecular weight of them is less than 1,000 Dalton. Recently, it was synthesized, the tetrapeptide for clinical use, epitalon in the process of approval. Here, I listed the main effect of epitalamine. They have antigonotropic effect. Very important, decrease the threshold of hypothalamus feedback inhibition by estrogen and glucocorticoid. It means increase sensitivity of hypothalamus to feedback regulation. Restore ovulation and fertility in told female rats. It was approved also in clinical trial. Epitalamine was given menopausal women and restore estrus menstrual function like Professor Perpauli have reported with melatonin. It's prolonged reproductive function in female as well as male. It was done recently. Increasing sleeping time. Increased melatonin synthesis and secretion. It was done in rats and uh, humans. Increased tolerance to glucose. Recently, it was defended candida PhD dissertation about anti-diabetic effect of epitalamine. Very good result. Decreases serum cholesterol and triglyceride level. The inhibit lipid. Also, epitalamine have very strong effect on the immune system. It's reduced the time of skin transplant rejection, increased RBTL induced by CON-A and phytogemagglutinin, increased CFU in the spleen after uh, panelectomy, increased timing serum factor, and delay immunosenescence in mice, rats, and humans. Very important effect of epitalamine is its anti-tumor effect. It was proved in the different model. First of all, it inhibits spontaneous tumorogenesis in uh, cancer-prone C3H mice and outbred SHR mice with derived. Inhibits spontaneous tumorogenesis in female rats. Inhibits carcinogenesis induced by seven. 12 dimethyl benzantracen, nitrosamethyl urea, very important nitrosamethyl transplacentally in offspring, it inhibit. Animals was in exposed to carcinogen during pregnancy, but epitalamine was given after delivery. It, it inhibit carcinogenesis. Also, it inhibit carcinogenesis induced by, by total body X radiation. Also, it inhibits growth of transplanted tumors in mice and rats, inhibit growth of some tumors in vitro, and potentiated effect of cytostatic and laser therapy. Here I summarized our maybe 25 years old result on effect of epitalamine on lifespan of different 
animals. In rats, first our paper was published in English in 79 in experimental pathology, 25 increase in uh, mean lifespan in rats. Then we have published data in C3H mice, SHR mice, Drosophila melanogaster, and Cenarabridus elegans. In all animals, epitalamine prolonged lifespan, and in majority of cases, maximum as well. Recently, we have done uh, experiment in Drosophila melanogaster and synthetic peptide, tetrapeptide from pineal gland, epitalon, with in different concentration, you have seen it's some very, very small concentration of this peptide, prolonged lifespan of Drosophila melanogaster. In each experiment, we have significant prolongation of lifespan. Very important, uh, Professor Harmon yesterday had a brilliant lecture on the free radical theory of aging. In our experiment, we evaluate the effect of aging on free radical process in our rats. We measure parameter of free radical process in serum brain and liver of male rats in, at three months, at 30 months old. You see in majority of tissue, we have a lot of changes in reactive oxygen species production, DN conjugate increase, shift base increase, protein peroxidation, a total antioxidant activity decrease, and activity of SOD decreases as well. Uh, when we test effect of epitalamine on free radical process, you will see in any case in drosophilamine nagaster, conjugate hydroxy peroxide, ketodien, was decreased decrease in the drosophila after treatment with this peptide preparation. Activity of SOD was increased, not statistically significant, but catalase activity increased very significant. In serum of rats, melatonin and epitalamine was comparison, comparison in the one experiment. You see both melatonin and epitalon, it's synthetic peptide from pineal gland, decrease the hemoluminescence and the carboxylation of protein was increased by melatonin but decreased by epitalon. Total antioxidative activity of the serum was increased both by melatonin and epitalon. Activity of SOD was decreased by melatonin, but little bit increased by epitalon. Also, ceruloplasmin was decreased by melatonin at practically non-changed, but by our synthetic peptide. Here I could present you the data on the blood serum antioxidant defense enzyme in human of different age. Total antioxidative activity and radical activity was decreased as age advanced in three different groups of patients. It was approximately 25-30 patients per each group without serious diseases. It was healthy patients. But then this patient was treated with epitalamine, and we measured the parameter of free radical process in the serum of this, this patient. You see total antioxidative activity. It was a control group, it was young patients. This uh, treated patient before, it was elderly patients with some diseases. In any case, treatment with epitalamine increase, improve the situation. For example, you see decrease the ketodien, DN conjugate, shift base, increase SOD, glutathion peroxide activity, and anti-radical activity. It's human data. Generally, it's, uh, Professor Havenson proposed some coefficient of homeostatic stability in humans. What this means? If we will measure a lot of parameters in biochemistry, immunology, immunology hormones, it evaluated as norm, 25, 30 years. And you see norm is 25, 35 years, normal parameter. Number of parameters which changes with age increase and coefficient of homeostatic stability decrease. Treatment with epitalamine uh, improves the situation. A lot of patients have a normal parameters of biochemistry, immunology, and hormones after long-term 
using of epitalamine. As usual, we treat animals, people every six months, very short course, 10 injection, 10 consecutive injection of the epitalamine. Some patients got it 20 years, 20 years. And uh, recently we have finished the big set of experiments of effect of melatonin D-peptide from thymus villon and tetrapeptide for pineal gland epitalon on lifespan parameters in female CBA mice. You can see mean lifespan was increased slightly by this, by this agent. By epitalon significantly increased maximum lifespan by 10 months in comparison to control. It's very significant for mice. Melatonin and villon was slightly increasing maximum lifespan. Very important finding in this experiment was the number of spontaneous tumor incidents, spontaneous tumor development in female mice. You see villon and epitalon de significantly decrease the number of tumors, melatonin slightly increase the total number of tumors. Important thing finding was the number of malignant tumors in the same animals. You see in control groups, there are no any lung adenocarcinomas and lymphomas. And in melatonin groups, it was significant increase both in lung adenocarcinomas and lymphoma in comparison control. This only one cases. It was not significant. Also, in the same experiment, we have measured the effect of the peptide and melatonin on free radical processes in the brain and the serum of our mice. You see, hemoluminous, luminol induced hemoluminescence, DN conjugate, shift based total antioxidative activity, and so D. In each case, only epital epitalon have maximum good effect. You see total antioxidative activity, melatonin as well. SOD maximum effect of, was from epitalon. Shift base was inhibited by melatonin and epitalon, not by villon. DN conjugate decreased mel by melatonin, not changes by epitalon. Hemoluminescence was inhibited only by melatonin and epitalon, not by villon. Not by villon, yes. Also in serum, you, you see melatonin and epitalon have maximum effect. Villon practically not affected, effect, uh, not affected the free radical pathway. Here I summarize it, the gross effect of our huge experiment. It was published recently in Mechanism of Aging and Development this January. And uh, you see there are no effect of our peptide as well as melatonin on food intake because caloric restriction in food intake, you know, prolonged lifespan in our experiment, no effect of the drugs on the body weight, melatonin slightly increased body weight, villon and epitalon no, no effect on food intake. Very interesting finding with epitalon and melatonin and slightly villon have made animals more lazy they have less, he was le less active. Physical strength was st significantly increased by villon, but not by epitalon and melatonin. Reproductive aging was not affected by villon, but epitalon and melatonin slowed down reproductive aging on our mice measured by vaginal smears of estrous function in the animals. Very interesting finding was also the effect of epitalon on body temperature, because it's well known the de decrease in body temperature, it means slow down the metabolic process, and epitalon do it. Lifespan, maximum lifespan was increased by epitalon and melatonin, and slightly by villon. Tumor incidence was not decreased, but not increased by decreased by epitalon and villon and increased by melatonin. An antioxidative effect was strong in epitalon and melatonin. It was absent in the animals treated with villon. 
it means there are no absolutely similarity between these parallel, ex parallel groups and melatonin. Each drug has his own effect. Recently, we have finished the new set of experiment of effect of villon, epitalon, and tumor in transgenic RBB2 new female mice. This gene, very important for breast carcinoma development in human. 30% of all breast carcinoma express in human express this gene, and a lot of other tumors in prostatic cancer, ovarian, lung, and some other colon. And in our experiment, in very small dose, only one microgram of epitalon and villon was used for treatment of these animals. You see, villon have no any effect on tumor yield curve, but epitalon de decreases the appearance of mammary adenocarcinomas in tragenic mice. Here, the, the same data in this form, epitalon inhibit incidents, it was statistically significant. Very interesting, this cluster analysis, no tumors have more animals treated with epitalon, only one tumors have more animals treated with epitalon, and multiplicity of tumors, animals treated with epitalon was decreased in comparison to control. Villon have no any effect on the multiplicity of tumors. Also, it was have found the mean size of mammary carcinomas developed in our transgenic mice was decreased in animals treated with epitalon. We have found the induction of apoptosis in the, these animals. It was explanation of this result and inhibit proliferation activity. On this picture, you can see the effect of uh, epitalon and melatonin on the expression of RBB2 oncogene in comparison to control. You see epitalon strongly inhibit expression of this oncogene, melatonin inhibit it as well. I uh, not show this data, melatonin inhibit carcinogenesis in transgenic RBB2 mice as well. Then recently we have finished a new set experiment with very strong model of colon carcinogenesis. We use DIMH, dimethylgidrazine. It's induced 100% tumors, colon tumors in six months in animals, in, in ascendant and descendant colon in, in rectum. You see, we use three separate groups of animals treated with epitalon. In the first case, animals was exposed only during the treatment with carcinogen. In second group, uh, after treatment, after treatment with carcinogen. And in third group, uh, epitalon was started just after the beginning of the DMH treatment and ended at the end of all experiment in six months. You see, multiplicity of DMH-induced colon tumors was significantly decreased, particularly in the animals treated with epitalon during the all experiment. In this, this, in this case, in comparison to control. Also, very interesting subdivi subdivision: the effect of on uh, some compartment. It's total data. It's ascendant colon, descendants, and rectum. You see in ascendant colons and descendants very strong effect of long-term treatment with epitalon. Uh, in the same experiment, some finding was done in the small bowels, the same rats. Uh, epitalon decreased the number of two incidents of tumors in small bowls of these animals. Okay, just now we have in progress some new experiment with senescent accelerated mice. They got epitalon. Uh, also, we repeat epitalon with uh, combine it with some other drugs, antioxidant with melatonin, and we suggest that these drugs are free of any 
adverse effect. They have also the anti-diabetic effect. We have proved anti-apoptotic effect. It induces apoptosis in tumors, but protect apoptosis in nervous system. It could be very promising geroprotectors, I hope. It. Thank you for your attention.